Viewer discretion is advised. If you just know you're that girl, yeah. you just have no choice but to be that girl. And I feel like I'm that girl. What if you don't wake up feeling like that girl? How do you be that girl? You need to go back to sleep and wake back up again so you can feel like that girl. There you have it, child. That's why I feel like I'm the T. I feel like I'm the T because I work at being the T. <laughs> like, no shade. I'm not the T just because a bunch of bitches like me and live for me because we all homegirls. I'm the T because I'm the motherfucking T. And that's just sad. <laughs> like, like, I, I mean, that's just what it is. People legit in the world love to live for food. Love, 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 love to live for food. Love to live for your bald head home girl that just bald head home she like, like it's like it's clear that I'm I'm working at being the sea so girl let me be the sea <laughs> like give me that give me my flowers sometimes you need to get knocked down before you can really figure out what your what your fight is and how you need to fight it your very existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't had a chance to do so by now, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And to go a step further, please tap the notification bell. That way you'll be updated each and every time I'm uploading something new. Also make sure you're following me on Instagram at ybent.tv as well as my business page at Tika Naturals. And if you would like to support the platform in a financial way, please feel free to do so. I'll make sure to put all those links in the description box for easy access. All right, everybody. So let's get into the video. Honestly, I have recorded this over and over and over and over again. Um, me and my nephew had the opportunity to go see Wakanda Forever the weekend it came out. And since then, I have really been trying my best to do... <laughs> this rant girl this conversation piece about wakanda forever girl which is the second installment of black panther and the ending of phase four for the mcu i believe phase five i begin i believe begins in 2023 um but yeah i had a way that i wanted to approach this conversation and i just was thinking to myself throw that shit out the window and just go for it girl because by now you all have already seen the movie if you haven't shame on you girl go out and support wakanda forever <clears throat> all right so let's just dive right into my thoughts <laughs> okay uh questions my concerns girl i feel like i'm interviewing with human resources girl um because all right let's i have some unpopular opinions um First of all, shout out to Chadwick Boseman. May he rest in peace. They did not do him any justice um, with the whole memorial situation. I felt like we could have really did something great here, not just the time he worked on Black Panther. You guys could have saved this like five to 10 minute video towards the end, right after the end credits, girl. That's how I feel. Um, you should have done him a little bit more justice than um, what you tried to serve here on Wakanda Forever, girl. Um, <clears throat> you gave us a little bit in the beginning and you gave us a little bit towards the end um, when Shuri was reminiscing on the love they had, girl, okay? <sighs> um, that's number one. I feel like y'all did a poor job of that. Um, what well, would have been cute, go down the list of Chad Bozeman's accomplishments, you know, give us the video, the photo montage girl of, you know, all the movies he's been in. I just felt like that would have been really cute. I know it's not a, like a BET special RIP moment, bitch, but I we could have served a little bit more justice in, with him. Um, which is why I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> which brings me to this conversation. There was a lot of lack when it came down to like serving Chadwick Boseman justice, but throughout this entire movie, it was a special nod to, you know, him, to then the character T'Challa, which is why I was surprised there was such a, a disrespect I felt with the lack of acknowledgement of Chadwick Boseman. So let's jump into this conversation real quick. My concern is this. 
Ryan Coogler and the cast and everybody who worked on this film, obviously you guys are really close with the people that are working on your projects. These actors and actresses, I understand, especially when we have TV series and in movies that have, you know, sequels, prequels, quills, girl, whatever you want to call them, girl. There's multi multiple. So you're creating cast relationships. You guys are like best friends at this point. OK, <clears throat> when we talk about the Marvel series, girl, a lot of the same people have graced the stage. Hello, God. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like there should have been a little bit more for him in that regard and too much personal feelings went in to this movie and what i mean by that is forgive me for saying this but chadwick boseman passed away not t'challa okay i know a lot of people don't want to hear this but you should have recasted let's just tell that truth um, you mess up the continuity, you, you mess up the historical, um, the love, the, the blueprint for the story of Black Panther, in my opinion. Um, I, I just felt like y'all really, really messed that up to the point where that's what made this movie very low, 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 low vibration for me. I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm just going to tell the truth, girl. Like, I know... I love com the comics. I love the animated series. I love to... I know the history of these particular characters. And to take T'Challa out the way Chadwick Boseman, the actor for the character, went out, I felt like was too close to home. You guys were not objective in creating this particular movie. And when I say that... You did a horrible job at making Shuri Black Panther. I apologize. I'm not sexist in any regard. But girl, how is a toothpick going to save Wakanda? I don't give a damn how many Black Panther powers and how many ancestor spirits are living within her ass, girl. It is not believable that a toothpick is out here doing uh, and, and accomplishing Black Panther type feats in the Marvel Universe. What would have been cute is if you would have played a little bit more on that scene with um, Killmonger and maybe had him like hijack the thing and he probably found a way because, you know, evil never truly dies, girl. Hello. And maybe he learned his ways by being in that so-called Black Panther afterlife shit and he caught a ride back with Shuri back to the real world or something. Hello. And he became Black Panther or some girl or just recast it. Let's not even act like T'Challa was the one who actually died when in fact it was Chadwick Boseman, the actor for the character, okay? Um, I feel like I've had to repeat that so people can kind of understand where I'm coming from. We see a lot of times in movies, uh, Spartacus, that actor ended up getting cancer girl and he had to bow out, they recast it. They still had someone else play Spartacus. Hello God. There are plenty of movies and television shows where actors and actresses may not uh, just have died but they may have said, girl, I don't want to renew for the season. I have another project I'm working on. And, you know, it overshadows this one. So I have no choice but to bow out gracefully. They'll recast. Because that character in their story has not died yet. So that is one of <clears throat> two things that I feel like really destroyed this movie. Um... Why in the hell did the Queen Mother have to die? We're over here dealing with two major deaths in Wakandan history. Girl, please. I just felt like she carried the entirety of this movie damn near. Shout out to Angela Bassett, who's forever going to serve truth, justice, and grace when she steps on the platform, girl, to become the character that she's assigned to do. But let me tell you something. She, Angela Bassett, I don't, huh, hopefully they have given her all her things and more, girl, because she is legendary. She becomes the character. Hello, God. Not many girls out there can do that. Um, I just didn't see the reason to kill her off in such a horrible way. How in the hell is little robot fish or whatever her, whatever her name is, she's knocked unconscious under the water deep within. 
Miss Thing has more than enough air to go down and save her. And then all of a sudden, the one who is active in the saving ends up dying. That didn't make sense to me. It wasn't logical. Another thing, how the hell do we get that close to the Queen Mother? You guys made Wakanda feel like it was penetrable. You made it seem like Wakanda was no longer this protected safe haven girl. <clears throat> he was able to swim through your barriers, girl. I know that's a nod to, you know, his power scaling and all that kind of shit. Um, but I'm just saying, though, you made it seem as if it was easy as hell to just gain access to Wakanda. Um, I also want to shout out the Queen Mother for letting white supremacy know that, girl, you do not reign supreme over Wakanda. I loved that part of the movie um, in the beginning where the girl, the, um, the soldier girls had to come through and let them know, girl, we already knew what y'all was planning to do. Y'all been trying to steal our vibranium since uh, T'Challa and the girls decided to come out the closet about Wakanda's existence. Hello, got in the prize technology that they have over there, the advanced technology they have over there. The reason we didn't want to come out and tell y'all that is because of bullshit like this. You do what male supremacy does. You come through and you try to conquer, subjugate, and enslave. You want to steal for your own personal advancement so you can remain a world superpower. There's a lot of truth in this movie here. One of the reasons I loved it. Speak to it, girl. Hello. Seinfeld fish, there was no need for her at all. Girl, that BBO is killing you. No, ma'am. Mm. That is a horrible job. And she's wearing kitten heels. No, ma'am. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um... I just, you know, also I want to speak to the cultural the, the, um, aspect of this as well. Um, shout out to the Mayan community, girl, um, which Mexicans are their descendants, girl. Hello, God. And um, we have to show respect where respect is due. One of the oldest civilizations wiped out, disappeared without a trace, as well as the Aztecs, girl. Horrible. It is rumored that when the Europeans came through this bitch, they brought all that smallpox and measles and all that other disease with them, just like when Christopher Columbus came and laid waste to the indigenous peoples of this world, hello, Don. Um, yeah. Um, I like that we did have that. Um, Wakanda, um, we have to tell the truth here. Wakanda, we would like to know, is in Africa, correct? Africa is the cradle of life. It is the birthplace of life. So no disrespect to anybody, but we had it first. <laughs> we we want to make this fight and this battle between this. One of the things I liked about this movie and I didn't like about it was it did exploit the fact that people of color, we have this tendency to fight each other instead of the real evildoers, which is those male bitches. This movie exploited a lot of those facts. Um, we will sit here and go to war with one another. Hello, God. And it wasn't until the end of the movie they both realized, girl, we're doing all this foolishness, you know. But in the beginning, Mr. C. King did, um, did speak on that. And I was with him with that shit. Like, girl, look what they're trying to do. Look what these people are trying to do to us. As soon as you let the cat out the bag about vibranium, here we are. When people realized Tony Stark was not the only one with access to vibranium. And I don't think we ever talked about that either. How Tony Stark gained access to all that vibranium. Love the character Tony Stark down. But let's just tell the truth. You were over there stealing, girl. That's what the whole storyline was about in um, Black Panther, the first one. And um, I believe it was the Age of Ultron as well. So here we are. We're, we're doing all the celebration. But are we really looking at Tony Stark? He sacrificed himself. That's probably why he turned good. Because he realized his father, Hello God, and even himself at some point was probably out here. You know, before Tony Stark's great awakening. Hello God in the deserts, girl. Before he became Iron Man. 
he probably was like, wow, you know, all the things that are trying to make up for the sins of the past. Mm. Girl, please. So, again, love that. Didn't like it too much because it's just like, wow, like here we are again, even in the fictional world where we're at each other's throats. Okay, but it's not far from reality. It's actually rooted in reality. It's what's going on right now. It's what's been going on amongst black and brown people. We need to get our shit together before we are truly wiped out. Um, what else? There was no Easter eggs. I understand we have to do what we have to do when our fave passes away, girl, and we have uh, to do last minute checks and balances when it comes to wrapping up a movie and creating shock and awe. But usually when we have something this explosive, so T'Challa and Miss Fish had a goddamn baby and T'Challa supposedly knew about it. Only the mother knew and I think someone else knew. I forget. Sherry didn't know nothing. Um, T'Challa loved his sister. You don't think that T'Challa would have told his motherfucking sister that he had a son? Even if Sherry, of all people, understood that she didn't want the throne. She wanted to be free to do her. So I'm quite sure T'Challa, knowing her, his sister is a free spirit, would definitely understand that, you know what, I don't even want no one to know about him because I, I want him to have um, a real existence. We don't want him to be sitting around here worried about, you know, ascension to the throne, being the Black Panther, and let him be a kid. So I just didn't understand that whole, uh, that whole, you know, foolishness. Um, there would have been some type of, if this was real, they would have, you know, there would have been some Easter eggs, girl, to let us know that T'Challa has a baby. There were never any moments in any Black Panther reference whether he was in um one of the other marvel films girl that he was romantically involved with her we never saw it there was innuendo we knew they had a relationship hello god many moons but we did not know that they were actively involved currently so it just didn't make sense to me mbaku <clears throat> being um the king of wakanda I thought this, and this was another reason why I did not like the movie. The King of Wakanda has to be the Black Panther. So Shuri, Suri, whatever your name is, girl, you cannot be out here just giving away the throne. I know we're in that, you know, space now where, girl, the old rules are out. Let's implement our new ones, girl. I am the King Queen after all, bitch, so I can do whatever I want. But let's be honest here. The ruler of Wakanda has to be the Black Panther. They have to be deemed worthy. Or let's just tell the truth on this. You needed a scapegoat because you knew that we knew that in order to become the king of Wakanda, there is a there's a test. And that test is in battle without the powers of the Black Panther. You guys knew that Shuri... Hello, God, would not be able to defeat M'Baku or any other challenger because she is not, she ain't shit without the serum girl that makes her the Black Panther. And another thing that pissed me off about this movie. So she becomes the Black Panther and automatically she's Jackie Chan, bitch. She's Jet Li, girl. She's Bruce Lee, girl. Nowhere have we seen Siri training at all. And nowhere does it say that having the powers of the Black Panther gives you the ability to judo chop motherfuckers when you didn't have any prior knowledge to that. I need all of that to make sense for me, please, with a fucking cherry on top, bitch. Okay. Um, the gift of song that these mermaid bitches had, right? which I like to call this, this is the fake Atlanteans, girl. This is, apparently there is a story reference where the Atlanteans and these people from the Black Panther film, I forget their name, forgive me, child, um, where they do meet up, where these people actually try to wipe out the Atlanteans, child. It's a whole story, girl, another multiverse conversation, girl, okay? 
Um, there's many universes to to the MCU girl and the DCU. So, child, there's a lot going on. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like Namur, whatever his name is, girl, it was just a knockoff Aquaman, in my opinion. Um, we know that Aquaman is that nigga bitch, okay? His power is beyond, all right? And will totally wipe out, you know, Namir, Sir Mariner, whatever his name is, child, out, okay? I also wanted to talk about this real quick. In their world, the MCU doesn't really f have, I don't think they've ever really done underwater tea girl before. You guys suck at it. Now, DC did their motherfucking thing with Aquaman, girl. That was picture perfect. Um, when it looks like people are just regularly swimming in a pool, if you live underwater, that means your body adapts to the new environment. Um, we see it with mermaids. We see it with different types of fish. And we see it with all kinds of shit, right? Where you will have webbed feet. Even ducks have webbed feet because they swim in the water, girl. You have a lot of different other, you know, creatures, frogs, all kinds of shit. Certain lizards, they have webbed feet because they deal with the water. So why aren't these people, they're just regularly swimming. We don't see any special feats with these people at all. Other than the fact that these bitches can sing a song and lure you to your grave, girl. I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't witnessed fast swimming like we see with Aquaman. I, ha I haven't witnessed anything that's remarkable. Even in the way that they live, people are like, oh my God, this city is so beautiful. Girl, it looks like y'all are in poverty. <laughs> Girl, no ma'am, the Atlanteans would never. Girl, please. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Um, these ugly ass robot suits that Siri made, they looked like they belonged in a Sonic film. I was not pleased. I just felt like there was no umph to this movie like where was the extra that we got in the first installment okay like I don't know I don't know I just I needed more there was a lot of lack you know I understand we're all sad you know all that but girl we got to get our shit together I really do feel like we should have waited on this movie they should have waited a little bit longer let's get the emotions out of the way Okay. Um, with the Black Panther suit, we saw that Siri also had the same, she installed the same abilities in this suit as she did when she gave that suit to T'Challa previously. So it absorbs kinetic energy. And when you get the opportunity, you can let that build and you can use it against your opponent. She only used it, I believe, once or twice in the slowest and dumbest of ways. Okay, I was just, it was just really unremarkable, girl. Really unremarkable. Another thing that's unremarkable is the fact that Adora Melange, the way that they were disrespected and slaughtered like cattle so easily. Girl, please, we are talking about the most advanced martial artist in the MCU. Do you know that Storm herself even had an issue taking down the Dora Melange, Melange girl in one of the universes for the X-Men? Do you know that storyline where Storm married T'Challa, child, she became evil by accident, girl? Hello, God. And she ripped Wakanda to shreds. She needed to steal a, a weapon from the Wakandan um, armory girl um, so she can defeat some enemy girl, and they wouldn't let her. Do you know the Dora Milaje stood their ground against Storm? Which is a planetary threat level mutant, bitch. So the way that they were just disrespected in this film, I was not here for. Very disrespectful. The Dora Milaje are those girls, bitch. I mean, I wanted to say this too. Um, why is everybody so surprised? You got a bunch of bald-headed women. I'm just, no disrespect, girl, um, who carry extreme masculine traits, girl. Why are we surprised and up in, a, in an uproar, girl, that a woman kissed a woman on the forehead? that there was insinuation that they were in a relationship. At this point in life, why are we going up in arms for bullshit like that? Why do, why do we care? 
but it's okay for these women to be out here half naked and gyrating and, and twerking on these men in these films, right? It's okay that almost every movie rated R and above, you get to see a woman's titties and her body and everything else. They don't do that to a men though. They'll show their chest, but they won't show their butts. They won't show nothing else, girl. So we have a problem when it's gay shit, okay. But we've already established that fact. The world only cares when it's gay shit. When it's black and it's gay, girl, it's wrong. That's what they say, right? Anyways, that's all I have for this. Um, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, did you enjoy the movie? Did you watch the movie? What were your thoughts? Um, I do want to say this ending off that Phase 4 MCU, I'm very displeased with. The only other movie that I believe did well was The Eternals. The Eternals came, saw, and conquered, girl, and, and, and reminded us how great the MCU really is and what it can be. Um, Black Panther overall, in my opinion, was a good movie. Overall. I have a lot of negative takeaways, but girl, please, it's just rooted in the fact that I'm a crazed fan um, and I know the history. And they fucked that history up. Um, but I will say this, Doctor Strange was trash, girl. A, a lot of the little subsidies child that we saw on Disney Plus, a lot of those were trash. Um, a lot of them weren't needed, required, nor desired. They don't make sense to the story. I just feel like Marvel, after Endgame, had no choice but to keep themselves relevant by pushing out trash, subpar trash. So I have been purview to what's going to happen in phase five of the MCU, and I'm very pleased. We'll be obviously getting a new Thor girl. We'll be getting new Marvel. Actually, I think the new Thor will be in the um, the phase six. Um, they only do one movie per. So I believe we're gonna be getting some good, 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 good stuff. We're getting another Eternals girl. Um, the Marvel family, we're gonna get them. Oh, child, so Brie Larson is coming back. Girl, please. Um, I wish they would have recasted her, but I guess they, they wanted to finish her contract out. That dry bitch, okay? Um, so hopefully phase five is much better than phase four because I was like, girl, this is not the fucking tea. Like, no man, Pam. Um, but yeah. All right, y'all be blessed and never stressed. Have a great day, honey. Um, and remember to help as well. Bye. And this is just an add-on to the video, girl, because I thought about this afterwards. Can someone please tell me why throughout this entire movie we did not see any member of the motherfucking Avengers, bitch? Like, no one showed up? This great battle is happening before us, girl, and you're telling me none of the allies showed up? Now, granted... I know this is rooted in a certain type of timeline where other people, um, such as Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, all, but Doctor Strange pops up in everybody else's damn movies. Hello, God. He couldn't pop up in this one. Well, he probably was going through the, you know, the multiverse of madness or whatever. But I'm just saying that like no one showed up. An integral member of the Avengers has passed on, girl, and you didn't even show up to the funeral, girl? I'm just saying, though, no one showed up. Mm, okay. Bye.